Please welcome Minchen. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you for attending my talk. And uh, uh, this talk, uh, today we're talking about the build safe and secure system in Rust. And uh, before that, let me uh, introduce myself. And uh, I'm the security uh, researcher in Baidu X Lab uh, in California, USA. And uh, basically, I'm doing some research on uh, system security, mobile security, IoT security, and uh, car hacking. Uh, I maintain some open source projects like uh, Metalog Linux, MetalPy, Tentard, and Pass for iOS. So, and, and you can check out that uh, repository in, in, the, in my GitHub and uh, my uh, website. And uh, a brief introduction about Baidu X Lab. And uh, Baidu X Lab is a research lab in uh, California. And uh, we do, uh, uh, we have a lot of people, like 200 of our people. But uh, um, we are, re for the research lab, is there about uh, 20 people. Uh, most of them are from the academia gap background. So we do some uh, system uh, research in like uh, fuzzy testing and uh, autonomous driving, security of autonomous driving car, and uh, memory safe programming language, and uh, uh, programming analysis, like uh, dynamic analysis and static analysis. OK, and we have a lot of open source projects. Uh, I will talk about that later. So the outline of today is uh, uh, we know that uh, Rust provide a safe and a secure uh, building uh, programming language. And uh, when we uh, use Rust to build this system, there are some challenges and uh, lessons learned and some open questions. I will uh, raise this challenge lessons and open questions in a security researcher's perspective. And uh, all from the uh, one paper, it is called Eternal War in Memory. It's in, uh, published in uh, 2013. And uh, 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 the, mm, the figure may be too small, but I will point out is uh, all of the uh, memory issues is beginning from two. The first one is making a pointer go out of bound. And second, uh, make a pointer become dangling. So what the Rust uh, want to solve is this whole uh, issues, which is memory safety. Uh, for the years, uh, the security researcher actually doing a lot of work on the memory safety. Uh, for example, it use programming analysis, uh, like symbol execution. Uh, Clay is uh, uh, one of the famous uh, uh, symbol execution uh, platform. And uh, like memory checking virtual machine, well, green. And the compiler instrumentation uh, solution, address sanitizer. Uh, there are a lot of fuzzing uh, system, AFL, lib fuzzer and also a lot of formal verification system like Seahorn, Smart, uh, uh, Trusting Soft, uh, and so on and so forth. We do a lot of things to uh, mitigate the memory corruption errors. Um, but uh, for now, we know that Rust can provide memory safety and uh, con uh, better concurrency. So um, right now, in the current uh, these decades, we have Go and Rust as a safe programming languages. And the safe, they basically means memory safety. And uh, for, uh, uh, in this talk, I mean a safe, building a safe and a secure system in Rust. Uh, safe means memory safe access and safe concurrency. For security, I mean uh, less vulnerabilities and reduce attack surface. Uh, so we want to build a system uh, with safe memory safety and reduce attack surfaces. So um, uh, what, what, what we have done, we have operating system like Talk OS, Redux OS written in Rust, and the Rust compiler written in Rust, and uh, less, like networking services, uh, DNS, uh, DN, uh, and TLS library, and some web server and database, and the browser like Servo and the CSS engine. And uh, for Baidu, Baidu did a lot of work in Rust. Uh, we have uh, like one, two, three, four, five uh, projects written in Rust. 
One is the master lock Linux. As a memory safe Linux distribution, we actually write all the user space to a box like a busy, uh, provide as a busy box uh, in Rust. It's called a master box. It's a collection of a core system utility written in Rust. And the uh, master link is a memory safe and uh, open SSL compatible uh, TLS library. And the Yiming uh, uh, already have a talk in Rust Fest this year, uh, uh, two, one month ago. And the uh, master Pi is a secured and fast uh, Python based on PyPy. And uh, we, uh, re uh, we replace some C and code uh, to Rust and uh, glue Rust and uh, PyPy. Uh, the last one is Rust SDK, SGX SDK. SGX is an uh, Intel uh, feature uh, um, to provide a secure uh, execution environment, trusted execution environment, and we modify uh, Rust standard library and port it into the uh, Intel SGX so that you can write SGX enclave in Rust. And there are many more um, uh, projects that will be open source uh, next year. Okay, let me talk the challenges, the lesson learned, and the open questions. Okay, when we do this uh, project, we face many challenges. The first one is the Rust language and ecosystem itself. Uh, you know, uh, Rust language involves pretty fast, and uh, we need to keep track of the uh, RFC, the nightly Rust, the, the e whole ecosystem. Right, uh, there's a lot of create, uh, new create on the Chris IO. And um, sometimes a very stable and uh, very popular create, there's suddenly no one maintain it. And uh, the, the author is, uh, is, I don't know, some create the author is lost. And also the unsafe rust. Um, uh, for the high-level development, we don't care. Uh, we don't use unsafe, right? But if you um, do some system programming, eventually you will use unsafe Rust to do uh, to guide better performance. To uh, talk about the like, drivers that like the memory uh, directly, so you need to use unsafe Rust. And uh, the third one is the foreign function uh, interface FFI. Right. Uh, if you want to build a very big uh, system, uh, you have to use many programming language, not just uh, Rust itself. You have to use C, C++, uh, Python, and Rust. So the interface between the different uh, between different languages is a, a big problem. You need to keep the uh, memory safety uh, between the uh, core of the different uh, languages. And the last one is what I mean, the challenges in the hybrid memory model. Uh, that means uh, different language have different memory model. Like say you need to uh, manually um, drop some memory, but in Rust there's, uh, there's no garbage collector. And uh, in Java, in Python, there's a, a global lock to uh, do garbage collection. So there are many challenges in the hybrid memory model. But uh, in this talk, I mainly focus on uh, unsafe Rust. So uh, unsa what is unsafe Rust? And when you read the document, there's uh, one uh, chapter in the advanced, advanced features, and uh, it is unsafe Rust. Uh, what is unsafe Rust? Uh, we know uh, that all the code we discuss about the memory safety, concurrence, uh, safe concurrency, is guaranteed by safe Rust. And however, uh, Rust has a second language hiding inside it. It, it. it is called unsafe Rust. It doesn't enforce these memory safety guarantees, and uh, it, this works just like regular Rust, but gives you extra powers. Uh, there are four actual powers when you look at it. The first one is dereference or raw pointer. So that's uh, very dangerous. Second one, access modifier or multiple uh, static variables. So, you know, there's some concurrency issues if you do the second one. Third, call an unsafe functional method. Uh, fourth, implement an unsafe treat. So, let's see the first one dereference or raw pointer. 
So uh, this is a uh, simple example. You can dereference uh, one, two, three, four uh, in the memory and get the value of the memory. So in this case, you can read and write arbitrary memory address, right? So that's uh, big security issues uh, for ICF Rust. The second one is access or modify uh, multiple static variable. So for this case, you can use uh, like the ANSIF to print the counter and uh, to increase the counter. The counter is actually a static uh, global variable. So this will cause data races. Uh, the third way is you can call the ANSIF function or method. Uh, for, for this case, you have a dangerous ANSIF function and uh, in the main function, you can call the dangerous function, uh, ANSIF function. So this is ANSIF. Uh, calling an unsafe function may cause undefined behavior if the if the unsafe function is not properly implemented, right? The third one uh, uh, is uh, is to call an unsafe function or method like external function. So when you use some um, FFI to call C code, to use C ABI to call C C++ plus code, call um, Python, uh, sometimes you need to use unsafe. Uh, so calling external function may cause undefined behavior, right? Because uh, you are in Rust, so you call some C code. The C code can do anything they want. They, they can manipulate the memory they want. So it will cause uh, some undefined behaviors. So, um, so what I want to mention is that some developers may say, it's OK, at least you explicitly uh, type the unsafe keyword in the source code, right? And uh, you can search and save in the source code to see whether it is safe or not. Um, but uh, what I mean is, it is wrong because unsafe code could include included in the uh, dependent libraries. So when you look at the uh, safety of a create, did you review the source code of all the dependencies? It's not that easy, right? Um, for a Rust uh, libraries. It, um, it's always involved like a uh, hundred uh, dependencies. Um, so it's difficult to review all unsafe code. So that's what I mean, unsafe is agnostic for developers. So uh, this is an example. If we have a library, have a, a dangerous function, which is to de dereference a, a memory pointer, and uh, actually, we provide this unsafe dangerous function as a safe function. Uh, we provide this API to developers. So developer use this safe function to call some, they think it is safe, but actually it's not safe. It, it may have some undefined behavior here. So that's what I mean, and unsafe is agnostic. So uh, some libraries, including standard libraries, I wrap unsafe code and re-export as safe functions. So um, it's difficult to, uh, if you find a bug in your code, it's difficult to, de uh, to debug it, it, right? Because uh, the unsafe, the undefined behavior is origin from some uh, it deep, very deep uh, create inside your dependency. So uh, one case study is uh, Iron Shell. Iron Shell is a uh, uh, sh modern shell and the written in Rust, and uh, this is the in the um, introduction of Iron Shell in their in their uh, documentation. It is written entirely in Rust, which is greatly increased over our quality and security of the shell. Yes, it is true. Uh, it is written entirely in Rust, but uh, actually, when you uh, analyze the dependency, it's not true. So you can use uh, cargo tree uh, to print out uh, all the dependency. Uh, this is the uh, root uh, node, it's the iron shell, and uh, it depends on uh, libc. So every um, uh, Rust create, if you want to run on uh, Linux, it is, uh, if you want to use standard library, it depends on libc eventually. And also there is a create called uh, decimal. And uh, this decimal is also a C library and uh, is wrapped as a Rust uh, uh, API to Iron Shell. And uh, when you look at there are some batches, uh, uh, dash sys, and uh, lib loading. 
So lib loading can load some uh, uh, external library dynamically in the memory space and uh, call uh, to call the L symbol, to get symbol, and call the C, fun C function. So this creates are dangerous. It's not written in Rust, and uh, it will um, introduce some um, may introduce some undefined behavior. So how to um, find out this um, crate? You can use um, a color crate to print the depend dependency tree and the review of them. And you can also print out, uh, verbosely print out the compila compilation uh, um, process. And you can see here, it uh, link, it first compiled the decimal uh, 64.c and the link it uh, later. Uh, although the uh, I did find some bugs in uh, decimal 64.c, but actually uh, a lot of uh, Rust create depends on this uh, C uh, library. Um, another case study is uh, from uh, RustQL. RustQL is a Rust library uh, providing SQLite related APIs. Uh, it's actually an API wrapper of uh, S SQL, uh, SQLite uh, written in C. And um, there's a lot depend, uh, Chris depend on RustQL and uh, 200 downloads per day. And uh, mm, actually, there are some memory corruption issue in Rust SQL library. Uh, we tried uh, we tried uh, CVE 2017 uh, to uh, 691. Uh, it's a type confusion bug in uh, uh, SQ, uh, SQLite. And uh, we can easily trigger this bug in uh, RustQL because it depends on the C library, right? Um, so you can simply uh, write this kind of code in Rust and run it, it will uh, have a segmentation fork. So it's it already patched because um, the mainstream uh, SQLite uh, already fixed this bug, and, but the uh, Rust, RustQL um, point uh, pointing to a very old version of uh, SQLite, and they uh, upgrade the SQLite uh, right now. Okay, uh, we do some uh, static, uh, statistic analysis. We collect uh, all the create uh, libraries in CreateIO. Um, uh, this year, uh, in the beginning of this year, is about ten. Uh, 10,000 10, uh, Rust libraries and uh, total uh, 200 million public downloads. And we do two studies. The first one is uh, the usage of external C and C++ library. Uh, we want to see how many uh, C and C++ library is used in the Rust grid. And the second one is we want to find out the usage of the Rust keywords. Okay, let's see the first one. Uh, we um, we um, try our best to compile all the crates and uh, dump the uh, compilation uh, logs and to see whether it links the, some external libraries. This is uh, a result. Uh, the most pop, the, mo the two popular uh, external libraries is the lib crypto and the libssl. So because we don't have a Rust. Uh, um, we have a Rust TLS library called Rustos, but I don't know why a lot of Rust create only use OpenSSL for the TLS, the TLS connection. And uh, for others, the uh, backtrees, uh, ring call, ring test, OpenSSStream, and the mini C, uh, C helper, DL is a dynamic uh, library, and cripple helper is curl. And then when you look at these libraries, a lot of them are crypto libraries. And uh, some of them are zip libraries. Mini Z is a zip libraries. Uh, all of them are C. And, um, and some of the libraries, like OpenSSL, there are some his, uh, bad history in uh, years ago. There are horribly bugs in uh, OpenSSL. So, um, when you use Rust create, you need to, if you care about security, you have to look at the external libraries. Okay, so how many unsafe code? Is th uh, 3,000 out of 10 uh, Rust libraries contains unsafe code. 
and uh, there are uh, 14,000 total uh, contents and safe code, and there's uh, 600,000 lines of code and contents and safe code. And uh, uh, what, ha what, uh, what lessons we have learned? Uh, we, um, uh, we use some create and uh, we, f we found some bugs in uh, some, uh, some, some of our external libraries. This bug is caused by, caused by the unsafe code. And uh, let's see the first one. The first one, uh, this is not found by us, but it's an uh, unsafe code in, in an uh, XML library. Uh, this library is called SXD document, and uh, you can see from the title it is uh, used after free when passing the XML document. So this uh, bug is found uh, by a faster. It will uh, randomly generate some XML code and uh, mm, uh, feed to the XML parser written in Rust, and uh, suddenly the cause used after free. So when you look at this issue, it's a, it's a old it's an old issue about two uh, one years ago, and it's a, it's about the unsafe code. And the second one is uh, the popular CVEs in Rust standard libraries. So uh, there are two uh, there are actually three CVE in Rust uh, itself. Two of them is uh, uh, standard library. The first one is a buffer overflow vulnerability in standard library web DQ. And uh, for this function, when you look at the pull request issue and uh, the fix, uh, you may find out uh, the, the mm, cause of this issue is a line of unsafe code, but the fix is not inside the unsafe code. So uh, what we learn is that um, um, not the uh, the ANSIF is not caused by the ANSIF code itself. It will uh, propagate to other safe code because it, there is some da uh, data dependency between the safe code and ANSIF code. So eventually, if you uh, don't if you don't carefully implement some unsafe code, the unsafety will um, propagate to some safe, safe code. So the second uh, bug is uh, the standard library string repeat. It contains unsafe code, relies on a, a pre-allocated vector having the capa uh, capacity calculated earlier. So um, uh, this issue is pretty complicated, and um, um, I, I would say it's not easy to find out the fix and find out the, the uh, reason of this bug. But when you look at this bug, uh, you eventually find out it is uh, caused by an unsafe code. So this uh, uh, lessons we learn in uh, CVE in Rust standard library. Another one is the unsafe in Arctic. Arctic is a web framework and uh, it's very popular. But when you look at it, when you check the issue, you will find this issue is very interesting. It's an unsound user of unsafe in APIs. So uh, I, I highlight this issue uh, here Right now, uh, the Arctic uh, code contains a uh, hundred plus uses of ANSIF. Presumably, this is order of achieved to best uh, uh, possible performance in hard parts in the code. But uh, can be uh, reduce ANSIF, but re uh, remain the um, performance gains. And uh, seeing uh, mm, he come up uh, and look at the uh, ANSIF code and uh, said, I suspect most of this uh, code can be made safe with no performance guarantee, just be reconstructing same things. So um, uh, seeing review all the unsafe lines and uh, reconstruct the code and remove uh, most of the unsafe. So at last, uh, the last, uh, it's not the last week, the comments in the issue. Last week, ITX web has over 120 unsafe. As of today, I only count 38. Okay, so what this, what this 
uh, case uh, tell us. Mm, sometimes you uh, carefully design your uh, data structure, you can avoid the NC, but remain, uh, remain the performance um, uh, guarantee. So um, when you want to use NSIF to work around some compiler uh, compilation errors, think carefully, because we, will, we may introduce some NSIF and into your code. And uh, maybe if uh, what you want to gain, the performance is not, is not the only way to use NSIF code. Okay, so the last one is uh, FFI, foreign language interface in a, a library called MiniZ Oxidize. Uh, for this library, uh, it is a backend of Rust backend of uh, Flay 2. And uh, there are two backends. The first one is MiniZ. MiniZ is written in C, and uh, someone uh, re re rewrite the MiniZ and called uh, MiniZ Oxidize library. And um, this library is also used by our um, uh, Python um, implementation. So I, I found out that uh, the, there's a type confusion in the C API of this library. This, mean, uh, this means that uh, when you, um, the inflate state and the deflate the com uh, compressor state construct are not consistent. Uh, it will cause a type confusion, confusion issue when calling deflate with the inflate stream using the C API, resulting in a double free crash. Uh, for this case, it's, it's, it's different uh, because for this library, it not just provides the uh, Rust API to Rust developer, it also provides the C compatible API for C developers. So. Uh, the 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 uh, the author want to provide a safe zip library for not just a Rust developer but for C and C plus plus developer. But um, the problem is that uh, you cannot control the data provided by C side, right? You can provide a malicious um, and memory memory uh, space to the Rust. Uh, for this one, um, it's, um, it's a, a popular pattern uh, for in C. You use the API to create a, a memory and uh, like uh, OpenSSL, MiniZ, they do the same. You call first call the API called initialize. The initialize API will give you a memory. And the second, you use this memory, memory as a context. And uh, the second API, for example, zip, you will provide this context uh, memory uh, to that API to do some zip and unzip. At last, you need to end, you need to deallocate the context, right? Uh, for this case, um, it's not that easy to handle in Rust because Rust maintain their own memory uh, allocation and deallocation. If you want to uh, provide the memory, you want, if you want to allocate memory inside Rust and uh, give this memory to outside to C and later deallocate this memory inside Rust, it's pretty difficult to uh, design a safe C API because sometimes you, uh, there's something wrong in C side and there will be a malicious structure provided to you. you if you uh, deallocate that uh, like point, like a, a non-pointer, so there will be a, a, a non-point dereference. And uh, for this bug, it's a double free crash. And uh, for this bug, uh, I, I actually w uh, working with author to uh, find out a good way to fix uh, this uh, type of confusion um, issue. And uh, we actually, um, there are many discussion with the author. Uh, we uh, just found a, a good solution to solve this issue, but it's quite difficult to write this kind of API. Okay, this is uh, uh, four uh, lessons. Um, so, um, of for the Rust community, uh, do we um, care about security? Uh, yes, right. 
it's not about uh, uh, Rust uh, programming language itself. It's about the Rust code. Uh, for example, uh, in the latest uh, website, there's a Rust security policy, and uh, it, it defines how to report bugs of Rust standard library and Rust compiler and the whole process and the whole policy. And uh, the second is a Google group called Rust Long Security Announcement. Uh, there are only several CVE announcements in this group right now. And uh, the third one called uh, Rust the Second uh, Advisor, uh, Advisory Database. Uh, for this uh, database, uh, it contains uh, some um, like uh, memory issue bugs of Chris. And uh, later, you can use uh, cargo audit to audit all your dependencies if this dependency contains some uh, security issue inside the database. So if you uh, find out some um, crash, um, um, like double free and uh, tab confusion, so on and so forth, uh, this kind of bug, please report to uh, Rustec uh, advisory database. Uh, the last one is Rust Secure Code Working Group, and uh, uh, this working group mainly focuses on how to improve the secure, uh, secure code. And uh, also, there are a project called the Rust Fast Project, and um, uh, Fast, Fast is a good tool for testing, and it is also a good tool to find some uh, security uh, vulnerabilities I will talk about uh, later. So there are some open questions after talking about these lessons. Um, um, one question is, uh, can we um, translate C to Rust uh, automatically? Uh, currently, there are one project called C to Rust. Is, uh, success it can successfully trans uh, translate C to Rust, but all the Rust is as if Rust. Uh, you, um, the question is, can we use some static uh, analysis method to reduce unsafe Rust? And the second one is safety and security in Rust compiler and the standard library. Uh, for this, uh, open questions is, uh, is about the compiler itself. Um, when you look at the issue of compiler, there's a label called unsoundness. Um, and there's a bomb uh, emoji um, beside unsoundness. So, uh, so there's a problem of Rust compiler. Um, in, uh, for example, in Nightly, someone introduced a new syntax. Um, the Rust compiler itself failed to check the memory safety of the code. The borrow checker failed to check some uh, Unsafe code, so this is called unsoundness in Rust compiler. So uh, there, are, well, if you are curious about this uh, bug, you can search uh, unsoundness in the Rust compiler issue, and it's very interesting. And uh, it's very interesting to uh, fix this bug because uh, it will be it will introduce some legacy uh, problem. And the second one is standard library uh, issues. Um, for example, the two CVE in Rust standard library, and uh, there are many uh, uh, prior work uh, in C and C++ how to ensure the safety of standard libraries. So can we use that um, methodology to, um, to go through of standard library and make sure it is safe? And the third one is unsafe Rust code analysis. So um, there are mo a lot of code analysis tools, method from uh, industry and uh, academia, and uh, how to uh, do this uh, code analysis uh, is is I would say it it is simpler than uh, doing code analysis in C and C++, right? Because for us, there's no aliasing problem, so um, it's easy to um, to do some to apply some simple code analysis algorithm, and um, also for dynamic uh, analysis, um, Rust uh, there's a, a middle uh, middle level IR, and uh, someone write a middle level IR um, uh, executor uh, interpreter. You can write some plugins and uh, some uh, iteration on the on the 
on the interpreter to check the code dynamically. And uh, the fourth, can we do some sandbox and isolation on the unsafe code? So this is um, a big question. Um, it's not about engineering. It's about uh, like academic uh, research. Um, because can we? Because uh, uh, Rust code is uh, because it's unsafe. We want we don't we cannot guarantee the safety by the compiler. Can we do some uh, sandbox and uh, make sure the memory uh, shared between the unsafe and the safe uh, can be easily uh, decoupled? Uh, the last, uh, last but not least one is uh, formal verification. Uh, there are a lot of tools to formally verify C and uh, C++, and can we do it in Rust? Um, last one is memory safety cross various boundaries. For example, between uh, C and the Rust, between Java and the Rust, and Python and the Rust. Uh, for all of these questions, there's a lot of prior work mentioned uh, mentioned in the academic. So there's a lot of papers talking about, like, for example, memory safety cross the various boundary. A lot of papers are doing uh, between uh, Java and uh, uh, C. It's called GNI, uh, how to ensure the GNI code is uh, safe. And uh, formal verification, uh, there's uh, some work on uh, formally verifying a LVM IR. So uh, this, this work, uh, uh, there are a lot of work from uh, academic. Uh, there are some existing projects I want to introduce uh, to you. For the formal verification, uh, the first uh, formal verification tool of uh, Rust is called the Rust Belt. And uh, you can use COG to formally verify some Rust code, uh, manually write in some precondition and postcondition, and uh, also uh, there's uh, um, uh, tool called uh, uh, it, 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 there's a tool to formally verify Rust program use Mac, and the Mac is um, formal verification framework based on LVM IR. So for this one, uh, there's a paper uh, online. So for this one, um, uh, what they do is to um, reduce the gap between the Rust semantic and the LVM IR. So uh, for example, uh, the Rust compiler will, com will pack to, um, to I8 um, in one I60 uh, in LVM IR. So for this work, uh, the author um, 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 glue this gap and uh, do a uh, formal verification on Rust program. And uh, the third one is called Rust Sim, and uh, this is the uh, uh, latest work uh, uh, we by do work with uh, NTU National Technology University in Singapore. And uh, what we do is to uh, we um, want to keep the semantic of the Rust and do a formal verification automatically without. Uh, with limited um, um, uh, manual um, manu access it, uh, compared to uh, Rust about you, uh, we need to write the cog preconditions. And uh, there are also other formal verification framework like uh, Seahorn is also an open source um, academic project. And it, it, it is also based on LLVM IR. And we tried to uh, use this tool to uh, formal verify some uh, Rust code and uh, export uh, IR and uh, verify C It works. It works. And um, uh, it needs some work to uh, build the gap between IR and the um, and the framework. So besides formal verification for fuzzing. Uh, there are some fuzzing project called uh, someone. Um, um, have already bring AFL home fast LVM lib faster to a Rust uh, project. So uh, a lot of uh, Rust create use uh, Rust project to do some fuzzing to make sure there's no um, unintentionally unwrap and there's no memory safety issues. So um, there's a page called Trophy Case. And uh, there's a big table list that uh, the bugs found by uh, the father. 
So for the code analysis, uh, there's a project called uh, Miri. Uh, Miri is a, is a interpreter of the Rust middle level intermediate presentation, MIR. And uh, this uh, Miri is a dynamic uh, code analysis tools. It can find autobahn memory access and user free. And uh, it can find the invited user initialized data and some other uh, memory safety issues. But for this tool, is uh, dynamic code analysis. And um, uh, for static code analysis, I, uh, I haven't heard some uh, tools to do that. But if you heard, uh, come and uh, uh, talk to me. And other tools, uh, this one is called Cargo Gagger. Uh, for this tool, it will print out all the unsafe code of your uh, dependencies. Um, it is useful uh, sometimes when you want to ha uh, f uh, create a highly reliable and secure code. And uh, in the in in a company, if you want to review all the code of dependency, you can use this code to print out all the unsafe uh, code. Okay, so. Uh, speaking about the uh, academic papers, uh, so I'm from academic and uh, I read a lot of papers on uh, programming language code analysis and security. So actually, I summarized some papers uh, um, about Rust and uh, create a link. If you uh, are interested to read some papers in uh, academic, so um, you can um, you can. Uh, Find, out, find some papers in this link. OK, to conclude this talk, uh, I first uh, talk uh, briefly talk about uh, the Rust and how to use Rust to build safe and secure system. And uh, also, I, I want to raise some challenges and license learned uh, and uh, open questions. So the mainly uh, goals of this talk to uh, want to raise uh, um, want to raise the concern of the security researchers. Uh, you have to look carefully of the Rust code. And uh, uh, I, I, I mainly want to um, uh, raise that if you have uh, time to look at code analysis, and implement some uh, static analysis tool for Rust, and uh, uh, come up some uh, good ideas to sandbox and isolate unsafe code. So um, uh, that's uh, without that's uh, that's that's all. That's my talk. So any questions you can uh, ask. Thank you. We have time for one or maybe two questions. Um, moment. Hi, uh, you have mentioned uh, that uh, problem in uh, mini Z library uh, when uh, you get the malicious pointer from the C side and you told that uh, you find a solution. Could you please describe it a little? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, um, there are many, many solutions to avoid this issue. And uh, for this case, uh, what we want to do is to make sure the. Um, actually, we you can think about the whole memory. We have a tag to tag the 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 memory region to tag the structure to tag the pointer. If it is a zip context, it is zip context, or it is unzip context. So if you um, um, pass a uh, wrong or malicious context will panic or report a, a failed. So that's uh, one solution. It's not uh, very graceful. And uh, there are other solutions like you can uh, use a uh, hash. You can use um, um, tagging of the memory. and. Uh, Actually, in academic, is a memory tagging. Uh, you can use this uh, method to tag all the memory from uh, Rust to C. And uh, you, you can check the tagging of that memory in Rust and to see whether it is malicious or not. <laughs>